يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف There are many, many halqas, I forgot which, many halqas or halqat, halqat, we mentioned the same as the far. Uh, you can find it easily, so try to memorize it and learn the meanings more importantly, of course. This is the best form, as Rasulullah said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sayyid, Sayyid means master. This is the master form of the far, of seeking Allah's forgiveness, because you show your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you acknowledge your sins to Him. And you show gratefulness. That's and, and there's an amazing hadith about it. Whoever says it in the morning, why he's certain of it, and he dies that day, he will be of the people of Jannah. And whoever says it in the, at night, and he's certain of it, and he dies that night, he will be of the people of Jannah. <coughs> What's the condition? The condition says, Muqinan biha means he's certain of it, not Allah and and you don't know what you're saying, no. That doesn't make sense, right? You have to know what you're saying. Mash. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alami wa Atul Salatu wa Tamu Tasbi. Ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ali wa Sahabi Adnani again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for coming in this weather. I did not expect uh, most of you to come. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always give you this. Uh, him, uh, this resolve and this this uh, effort to to come and seek knowledge. We talked about the tongue, the parts of the tongue, and we mentioned the first makaraj of the tongue, which is what, which was what the qaf, right, <coughs> right. <coughs> okay. Uh, we stop here. Here. Okay. <coughs> quick review before we move on. Quick review about the the parts of the tongue. What is this? The first part here. What is the first part? This one. Here, this one. Quickly, if you know, say root of the tongue. We're done with the root, right? Because we put it with the far throat with aqsal uh, with adna al harf right okay what about what about this one this one huh, huh? say it aloud if you know middle part back part of the tongue which is what aqsal lisan i told you you have to memorize arabic and english wasat al lisan Middle part, طرف اللسان, front part, رأس اللسان, the tip of the tongue. Then we have the edge, one edge, and here the second edge. And the parts of the edge are extremely important, especially for the blood. First part from here to here is what? The far edge of the tongue. This part from here to here. The near edge of the tongue. And here, this is the end of the edge, right? So we're going to use these terms. Atos al hafa, far edge. Wasatul adna al hafa, adna al hafa is this, the near near edge. And this is muntah al hafa, the end of the edge. Okay? Okay. And we. We must learn what are the parts that this tongue might touch, right? To produce the certain letters. So we learn about the roof of the mouth or al-hanak or saqful fam, the roof of the mouth. We start with the gum, gum ridge, the front <coughs> part palate, 
the main part of the hard palate. Then we have the soft palate or the venom, they call it. And finally, we have what? The uvula. Al lahab. So we have al litha or al latha. Al litha. This is al litha, the gum. Muqaddam al hanak, the front hard palate. Al hanak al admi, the hard palate, means the main part or al sul. Admi means bony, sul means hard. Al lahmi, al hanak al lahmi, the fleshy palate or al rikhu, the soft palate. Same thing. Now, who knows what's the makhraj of the qaf as we mentioned before? In Arabic, yalla. Aqsa al-lisan with what? Hard palate or soft palate? With a soft palate. Aqo, right? Aqo, aqo, aqo. As you can see here in the picture, here, <coughs> I put a clearer picture in the in the other version. Anyway, this is fine. As you can see here, the back part touching this red area, which is what the soft palate. Look it clearly so that now you will see the difference between cough and cap. Okay, we talked about the cough, the main characteristics of the cough. Let's move on from where we start. So in Arabic we say what Makhraj al Isan has Imam Ibn Jazir Rahimallah said. What is the line we're explaining by the way? Which verse? 12, right? He said, uh, He said what? Previous line. <coughs> the back part of the tongue, فوق, above. فوق. ثم الكاف أسفل. Then he says, وَالْوَسْبُ فَجِيمُ الشِّينُ يَا So, أَقْصَلْ لِسَانِ فَوْقُ These are the three words that Imam Ibn Jazari summarized to mention the Makhraj of the Qaf. Now, the Qalqala is bouncing. This is a very, very important point that we mentioned last time. Qalqala is bouncing. The tongue means distantly, distancing. Distancing it quickly from the Makhraj. While keeping it in its position. Right? Apple, 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 adu, adu. Distancing the tongue rapidly without moving it from its position. So you don't say apple, 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 without also opening the lips or lowering, or lowering the jaw, the lower jaw. Or raising the middle part of the tongue because if you do any of these things that will add a haraka to the sakin later but you should not do this right you should keep it sakin because as i showed you in the last uh, class bouncing the ball if you bounce it correctly it should return to exactly same place right in theory in practice that's not necessarily exactly but that's what bouncing is that it returns Okay, even if it doesn't uh, return to the same exact place, Qalqala means returning to the exact same spot. Apo, apo, apo. You don't move back or, or back, uh, uh, backward or uh, forward. Okay. Do not. So that's Qalqala in regard with Qat and Jad. Qat and Jad, these four letters. What about the Ba? Qalqala for the ba is what rapidly distancing the lips from each other, right? That is the qalqala of the ba. Now, before we move to the examples, do not end the qaf sakina with hamza, as many people do. There are other points about the qaf. We're going to review this anyway to make sure we do not skip anything because I added some notes to this one. Do not end the qaf sakina with Hamza, as many people do. What do they say? They say, Khalaqo. Khalaqo. Even some, some of the Imams, he told me that this is how they taught him. That <coughs> you, you should, this is how you should make the Khalaqa. Like this. Iqara bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqo. Khalaqa al-insana min alaqo. Like this, he was taught. SubhanAllah. I 
pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me not teach you anything in a wrong way. So, Qaf Sakina should never end with a Hamza. Qalqala doesn't mean Hamza in any way, right? Aqo, Aqo, try Aqo. Aqo. Qalaqo. Qalaqo. Okay, so you don't add Hamza. You say Qalaqo, Qalaqo. Qalaqo. No. Okay. And you don't, this is the second point. The first point I mentioned was what? You don't. You don't uh, open your mouth, you don't open your mouth or lower your lower jaw or raise the middle part of the tongue or slightly round your lips because if you do any of these things, that will add a haraka. Example, look. Khalaqona, khalaqona. Is that the right palqala? Huh? One more time. Khalaqna. Huh? No. It's right, huh? Khalaqo. Huh? Khalaqna. Right? Okay, now look at this. Khalaqna. Khalaqa. I slightly opened the mouth, right? So that added what? Fatha. And this changes the meaning, right? Between, for example, Inna khalaqna. Surely we have created. But if you say khalaqana means someone created us. Khalaqana, right? Khalaqana, and some people do it this way. The other common one is the kasra. For example, they say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Khalaqina, khalaqina. You hear? What do you hear, huh? Khalaqina. So he's raising the middle part of the tongue a little bit. That makes part of the kasra. That's also wrong. Some people, this is how they teach it. Some shapes, they say that oh, this, you have to give it a slight, like a smell of the harak. That doesn't make sense. That's not correct. That's not in any of the authentic Tajweed books or, or never said by any of the reliable Tajweed scholars. Okay. Nor khalaqo ko, khalaqo. Po, po. Do we don't round them? No. Khalaqo. Oko. Lips are normal. Tongue is normal. Khalaqo. Got it? Okay. Yalla, let's read the examples of the Qaf. Then, let me go to the Kaf. But I, I'm sure I remember I had some more points. We'll do them next time, inshallah. Yalla. Aqo. Aqo. Qa. Qa. Qi. Qi. Qo. Qo. Aqo. Pay attention to this word. Always when you have a light letter, and heavy letter, and a light letter, when they come consecutively, light, heavy light, here comes your skillfulness. Here you should give more attention. Yellow. Aqo, aqo, no. Aqorab, aqorab, no. A. A. Say A. A. Aqo. Aqorab. 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 أو هو أقرب أو هو أقرب أو هو أقرب أو هو أقرب مزقت مزقت it's not there in the Quran right مزقت 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 خلقت خلقت قاف and كاف when they come together that's a common mistake we're gonna mention it in the كاف I think also for example لك قصورا لك قو كقو كقو don't mix them خلقكم خلقكم يلا quickly practice خلقكم خلقكم لك قصورا لك قصورا لك قصورا لك قصورا okay وأغرقنا same thing as خلقنا you change the قلقلة you change the meaning وأغرق أغرق وأغرقنا وأغرقنا الذين كذبوا وأغرقنا الذين كذبوا أغرق ها أ 
اوكي هنا وعد الله يحق لنا خير عقبا خير عقبا هنالك الولاية للحق هنالك الولاية لله الحق وخير ثوابا وخير ثوابا وخير عقب This is also a common mistake They say عقبا هنالك الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا Right عقب عقبا عقبا كأن في أذنيه وقرا كأن في أذنيه وقرا كأن that's حفص يختصر قصر فوضى ما تم تفصيل أوكي كأن في أذنيه وقرا كأن في أذنيه وقرا إنه فكر وقدر إنه فكر وقدر This word is important important look فك كر و قدر why it's important because heavy light heavy ها وقد Use your hands also when you explain to them heavy and light. It's very, very easy and very, very beneficial. وقدر قد ده 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 قدر دار right وقدر 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 okay of course I'm not I'm not this is not enough to check you're saying it right or no or or not because I have to hear everyone individually, and since you're reading to me during the week, in, in your hour, so now I'm just overlooking, so you're just doing a general general exercise, but not necessarily you're doing it right, so that's what we're going to check when you're reading. Okay. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَتَّقِ uh, the mistake also we mentioned about the Qaf and the Kha, who remembers about heaviness and lightness, who remembers? If the Qaf has Kasra, is it heavy? No, right? Huh? Who agrees? It's heavy. It's heavy in all cases, Ya Khayya. All cases, the Qaf is heavy. But when it has Kasra, it's in the least <coughs> level of heaviness. So it doesn't make sense to make it, to raise it to the first level or second level of heaviness. So it's not, it's not, it's not correct to say, for example, in the, like this example, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِلْ قِلْ 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 يَتَّقِلْ No, or like خِيْفَ خِيْفَ No, that's artificiality. That's تَكَلُّفْ That's not correct. That's exaggeration. So keep it normal. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِلْ قِلْ قِلْ You don't make it calm. You don't say يَتَّقِلْ قِلْ Normal. يَتَّقِلْ قيل 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 it's still heavy قيل but less heavy than when it has فتحة. Okay. ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا. ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا. It's better to connect this ayah. Stop here. Stop on مخرجا then go back and connect because it's connected. Okay. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَيَرْزُقْهُ يَرُ يَرُ يَرْزُقْهُ يَرْزُقْهُ وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ As I always tell you, these are very important examples because this is an example of most students make mistakes so focus on them and don't skip any example يَرْزُقْهُ Try Yarzuqahu So it's not Yarzuqahu Yarzuqahu See also we talk about this point Zuqahu Right? Yarzuqahu Zuqahu Right? Yarzuqahu Right? Okay Good
Okay. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ Whoever fears Allah, whoever has taqwa of Allah, whoever is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever has God consciousness, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا He will, he will make an exit for him. مَخْرَجًا I did not, I did not realize the word مَخْرَج here. We talked about makharij a lot, but we did not realize there's the word itself literally is in the Quran, right? Makharij, makharij. Okay, let's add it. Okay. This, uh, this is not mine. Mash. So, makharij, right? He will make an exit for you. No matter, no matter what <coughs> problems you have, Allah will make an exit for you. But when, <coughs> if you have taqwa of Him, if you obey Him, then He will help you. You turn away from his commands, how, how do you want his help? Like, it doesn't make sense, right? He tells you do something, you, you ignore, you forget, you show laziness, you don't do it. Then when you are in trouble, you say, please help me, you are Allah, you respond, you said you're... Ah, uh, really? But you did not respond, right? فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me? Then I will take care of you. Right? Doesn't mean remember me, I'm, I will remember you. Remember me, I will take care of you. Remember me in the times of ease and comfort, I will take care of you in the times of difficulty and stress. Right? فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَذْكُرُونِ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ This ayah, these are two, two ayah together, they put them in Syria in, in, in big paintings or big, what do you call it, these? Not painting, what is this? Frames. Frames. In big frames, they put them in, uh, in their shops and their houses. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ and he gives you sustenance وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ from ways that he doesn't expect. He gives you from ways you don't expect. SubhanAllah. You don't know. You just... Someone gives you a gift. Someone brings you something. You're not aware. You don't, you don't even expect. He provides you. He provides you from ways or through ways that you don't expect. But you just have to have taqwa of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Should get spare batteries <coughs> next time. Okay, let's finish these examples. Uqtulu Yusuf. Uqtulu Yusuf. This is also important. We mentioned it again many times. We keep repeating, huh? U O Tu. Right? U, U, K, Tu. U, K, Tu. You don't say, U, K, U, K, Ha, listen. U, K, Tu, Lu, U, K, U, K, K, K. No, no, no. It doesn't have, it doesn't have, Bismillah. It doesn't have Dhamma, right? It has what? Sukun, huh? U, K, K. Yusuf. Don't kill him. Don't kill Yusuf. Okay? That's what they said. I'm saying don't kill him. Okay. 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 
وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا Okay. <coughs> Here, the common mistake is what? Anyone has an idea? Some people say, يُلَقَّاهَا What's the mistake? Ko, ko. <coughs> the sound is not clear for you. Ko. You're rounding the lips. They round the lips, right? They think you make the letter heavy by rounding the lips. This is very common. So what's the rule? <coughs> rounding the lips has no relation to heaviness. At all. Always remember, rounding the lips only with wow and dhamma and rawm and ishma only. So, <coughs> what's the word here? Ah, laqahum. So don't round your lips. Not laqo, laqa, qa, ha, qa, 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 qa. See the difference? Qa, qa, laqahum, qahum. Try. وَلَقَّاهُمْ وَلَقَّاهُمْ قُولُوا قُولُوا قِيلَ لَهُمْ قِيلَ لَهُمْ Normal, huh? قِيلَ لَهُمْ ذُوقُوا قِيلَ لَهُمْ ذُوقُوا مِنْهَا قَائِمْ مِنْهَا قَائِمْ قَائِمْ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ وَقِهِمْ وَقِهِمْ قِ 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 وَقِهِمْ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ اقترب الوان الحقبي براكتس ما لها من فوا ها فوا وا فواق فواق ثواق ثواق لينفق فق اوكي لينفق لينفق عذاب الحريق عذاب الحريق لك قو لك قصورا لك قصو قصورا لك قصورا تراي لك قصورا ويجعل لك قصورا ويجعل لك قصورا المستقيم المستقيم من ستودنتس دي مستقيم كي 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 مستقيم مستقيم هدى للمتقين هدى للمتقين التقوى التقوى تقوى تقوى اوكي اني كويستشن سو فار بيفور يو موف تو ذا كاف اني كويستشن اوكي التقوى اوكي تقوى أقوى. This word is important, huh? تقوى تقوى تقوى. They say التقوى أقوى. Which means what? تقوى is stronger. This is literally what this sentence mean mean. But this is literally what this sentence means. But it it means what? With taqwa, we are aqwa. When we have taqwa, we are stronger. Right? And part of taqwa, a main part of taqwa, is to support your Muslim brothers and sisters. Not only that, but also to support the oppressed ones as long as you can. Support them in any way possible. Any way that you can support them, you have to support them. And there's a, uh, there's a frightening hadith that we have to be aware of when, as Imam Al-Tahawi mentions, in this authentic hadith, he mentions that Rasulullah said that someone was commanded to be lashed hundred times in his grave. Hundred times. And he kept begging and asking, then Allah 
Allah forgave him and reduced it to one lash, just one. Then when he was hit, his grave was set on fire because of that one lash. Then when he, of course he is burnt, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in the Quran, you know, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا وَلُوعًا يَذُوقُ الْعَذَابُ Whenever their, their skins are like cooked or like burnt, we replace them with other skins so that they taste the torment. Why? Because of what they earned. Because they got all clear manifest proofs and they reject them. With their arrogance, they, this is, these are the ones who deserve this. Not someone who made a sin that he asked Allah for forgiveness. No. Those who insist on this belief and get the signs clearly and, ma and, and, and uh, with the proofs, then they turn away and they reject just to follow their own desires and devils. So here, same thing. <coughs> so this person in the grave, he got up after that. Allah gave him life again after that lash. Then he asked, why did you lash me? What was the reason? <coughs> they mentioned two reasons. The first one, you, <coughs> you once prayed without wudu. It's not forgetfulness, no. Allah does not punish you for forgetfulness. But he maybe, he, he was in someone else's house and he got, he feel, felt embarrassed to, to tell him Allah, I need to use the restroom or to make wudu. So he's, yeah, it's fine, I can. Right? Or he doesn't care when he uses the restroom, he doesn't care to clean himself well and he just, and he doesn't make wudu correctly. Right? When you see the kids or even some adults sometimes, some adults you see they make wudu and they're, when they're leaving you see this area is all dry. It was, not, it was not even touched by water. This person if he makes wudu 50 years it will not be accepted of him and he will be punished. Why? Because this is the, the thing that you have to do every day, every day, every day. So you have to learn it right and do it right. Right? Like the one who prayed, then he went, Salaamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. He told him what? Go back and pray, you have not prayed. Right? Three times he went, right? Until he taught him the way, right? So, the second one is what? The second reason they lashed him is, they told him, and this is the point why I quoted the hadith, you passed by someone who is being oppressed, and you did not support him. You passed by someone who is being oppressed, and you did not care. Someone, he did not even say a Muslim, someone. So part of taqwa is to support those who are oppressed and to support those whose, whose rights are being violated and to support yourself, your own religion, your own holy sites. Like now we have Al-Quds, Jerusalem, our city for hundreds and thousands of years, our own city. The third most holy site in Islam. The third most holy place in Islam is Al-Quds. The first Qibla. First Qibla. Is our first Qibla. Our first direction of prayer is Al-Quds. Anyone knows how, ma how, many, how long Rasulullah and the Muslims faced Al-Quds in their Salah? Who knows? Who knows? Like 13 or 14 months? Like 13 years or something like that? Before, Mac before Hijrah, all the time facing Al-Quds. Before, before Hijrah. Facing both Kaaba and Al-Quds. <coughs> so Rasulullah was commanded to face Al-Quds first. <coughs> in Salah. In Mecca. When Salah was prescribed in the fifth year before Hijrah. Fifth year before Hijrah. But he liked to face the Kaaba that Sayyidina Ibrahim rebuilt. So what would he do? He will face both of them. Because there he could do that. Kaaba and Al-Qudus. So he, could, he can put them in one line. He can face both of them. So he fulfilled Allah's command. And at the same time he did what he liked also. 
right? Allah did not forbid him from this. He's facing Al-Quds and facing Kaab. But when he moved to Al-Madina, he cannot face both. Now Al-Quds is there and Mecca is there. He cannot face Mecca and Al-Quds at the same time, so he faced what? Al-Quds. So five years before Hijrah and after Hijrah, how much? How long? Huh? 16 months. 16 months. 16 or 17 months. They faced Al-Quds. That's our first Qibla and third most holy site. And if you pray there, you get the reward of 500 salawat. As Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith and in the other hadith, your sins will be forgiven by the prayer of Sayyidina Dawood, David, Alayhi Salam. You will live as if you are a newborn baby. Just like your mother, the time when your mother gave birth to you. Means no sins when you pray there. When you go there, just for prayer there. So with all this in mind, we all have to support our right before support the oppressed ones there. It is our right. You must support your religion, your Islam, your holy sites with all ways possible. If, we, if you are called, if you heard, hear about a protest or uh, in the social media you, you in, raise the awareness of people about this or you tell your brothers, your siblings, your, you, your friends, about the importance of this city for us and uh, the holiness <coughs> of this city for us as Muslims. <coughs> Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu, when he conquered this city, he did not allow Muslims to demolish the churches in the city. He did not even accept to pray in their church because he said Muslims might come later on and say, this is a masjid for us because our Khalifa prayed here, so he prayed away. So Muslims don't claim that particular spot. So Muslims, they preserve the churches and, and Christians who were there until this moment, they are there. Until this moment. And you see that the, 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 the church of the Spulcher, they call it? Who knows? Scup Spulcher? Sister, you know? Scup huh? No. Where they buried Sayyidina Isa as they, as they claim. But of course Allah took him to the heaven. And that's where the place he, Allah raised him to the heaven, to a high place, right? And that's the place where he was born. And that's the place where Sayyidina Ibrahim is, is buried. And that's the place where many prophets are buried. So for us it's a very sacred place. It's very sacred and holy place. So we should never, ever, ever be silent. And we don't care. Let him recognize it as uh, the capital of those occupiers and aggressors, doesn't matter, that's not our problem. If you don't care about Muslims' affairs, then you're not a Muslim. You're not a Muslim. You're not a true Muslim if you don't care about what's going on to Muslims. But, uh, Muslims in, in Al-Quds and in Palestine in general, Palestine was, let's say, this amount, okay? I can draw it for you. Almost it's like this. <coughs> oh, this is approximate map <coughs> for Palestine. Who was who was taking over Palestine in in the uh, 1920s after the Ottomans? Who came? Who knows? Britain, right? Britain. Britain was here. The Palestinians made revolutions against the Britons. Then they, the Britain, the British, they started allowing the Jews. To migrate from Europe because in Europe they were oppressed the Jews right they were op oppressed in Europe but in our Muslim countries they were never ever oppressed the Muslims never ever oppressed the Jews or Christian or Christians or any other people no Muslims are the ones who gave them their rights and preserved their churches and synagogues until this moment in the Muslim countries so they wanted to get rid of the Jews Wallahi, they wanted to get rid of them because they know their character many of them this is a fact so they 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 promised them and this is the British Prime Minister at the time 1917 huh you have to know the history of your third most holy city 1917 someone the Prime Minister British Prime Minister Belfort he made a Belfort declaration you know what he says that the government of Her Majesty she looks with the eye of mercy to the Jews and she 
she will give them Palestine because it's her father's uh, ownership. So she's giving. <laughs> so they promised the, the Jews to give them Palestine. And they started while they were occupying Palestine, allowing the Jews to come. Then they started what? Building settlements. Settlements. Then, 1940, who knows? Eight, something called Israel was established and announced. That so-called state. When, when did it come to existence? 1948, Palestine was where? Thousands of years. Thousands. Thousands of years that for Arabs and Muslims. But these murderers, they just appeared. 48, they announced their state. Of course, with the help of the Europeans and Americans bit by bit. So, then 19. So here they took a big part now. In 48, the so-called state now. Look, look Palestine, huh? Before, before the British, there were few, few Jews, okay, as in every country. Muslims tolerate their existence, right? Then 1967, we have something called Nexa, the disaster that took place in the Arab world where the Zionists or so-called Israel, they attacked the Arab lands, they took apart another part of Palestine and part of Syria, part of Egypt, etc. Then we had, until now, <coughs> now they all took part of Al-Quds, and now, so, now all of Palestine is occupied, except for Gaza, it's here. And it's under siege. That's what is the only part here. All of this part is occupied. Then, someone comes and <laughs> claims this is the capital of those occupiers and aggressors. This is history and religion, and it's all this at the same time. And those aggressors, every day, what do they do? They made a wall, by the way. Did you hear about this? Anyone heard? Raise your hand. Did you hear that they're building something we call racial separation wall? This is what we call it. They build a wall here, <coughs> and you know what they do? They eat up the lands of the Palestinians, big portions of their lands, under the pretext of building this wall to protect themselves. <coughs> Just yesterday they shelled Gaza and two martyrs we have and 15 wounded people. They build this wall, they build every day settlements. In Al-Quds, what do they do? They demolish the houses of Palestinians. Every day they demolish houses. Go and check 